And who's got it better than us? No! Welcome back to Jersey Head University, the intersection of authentic sportswear and passionate storytelling. Normally on this channel, we do obsessive deep dives and reviews on authentic and game-worn sports jerseys, but we're also huge college football fans, and as a Michigan grad, of course I'm a huge fan of the Michigan Wolverines. Wanted to do a special episode talking about this most recent win against Ohio State and why that means so much to Michigan fans like myself. Now every fan base has irrational fans, but I think that's part of what makes the sport special. That being said though, I do think the overwhelming majority of Michigan fans would agree that a repeat of the 2023 season was not likely to happen. Now, we had one of the greatest runs in college football history last year. And despite all our controversy and our head coach sitting out for half the regular season, we still went 15-0, beat all our rivals, won a conference championship, beat Alabama in one of the best Rose Bowl games of all time, and went on to whoop Washington's butt in the national championship. But all good things have to come to an end. In the offseason, Michigan loses its head coach, Jim Harbaugh half of the coaching staff, and of course, 18 of 22 starters from Team 144. But there was some optimism. On offense, we were getting back Donovan Edwards, and of course, Colston Loveland, arguably the best tight end in the country. On defense, there was still a ton of first round talent that was retained. Will Johnson was coming back. So was Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant. Along with standout players like Josiah Stewart, Makari Page, it wasn't out of the realm of possibility for Michigan to have another good season to follow up the national championship. But, as we quickly learned in week two against Texas, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. Khalil Mullins' huge run kind of bailed us out of the USC game, and after taking a huge lead the next week against Minnesota, we almost coughed up that game. Problem was, there was no good quarterback to fuel this offense. The early season saw a rotation of Orgy and Warren, and just as we thought there was some life to the offense after Tuttle came back, he kept on turning the ball over, and it cost us the Washington game, and of course the Illinois game. We had a pretty good game against Michigan State, but we continue to have a couple more losses that almost cost us full eligibility. By this point in the season, the defense was starting to figure it out, and did start making adjustments, but the offense was completely stagnant. Then came the Northwestern game. Michigan scores 50 points on the Wildcats, and it kind of rejuvenates us for the upcoming game against Ohio State. Now the rivalry against Ohio State's been interesting. Michigan leads the all-time series, but Ohio State has had our number for the better part of the 21st century. In fact, in Harbaugh's first five seasons, he went winless against the Buckeyes. But after a disastrous 2-6 and six season in 2020, and actually canceled the game against Ohio State, Harbaugh went back to the drawing board, and it felt like this team was completely rebuilt from the ground up. For the first time in a long time, this team felt really cohesive. Going into the 2021 game, Michigan was a heavy underdog, but found a way to beat Ohio State, with Hassan Haskins going absolutely berserk and getting five touchdowns. The year after that, Michigan was again the underdog, this time playing in Columbus. What do we do? Donovan Edwards puts on an absolute clinic and has two long touchdown runs in that game. Wolverines win big, and it was like the first time in two decades that the Wolverines beat Ohio State in Columbus. Then we get to 2023. So for those who are not aware, Jim Harbaugh gets suspended for the first three games of the season, basically for buying a kid a hamburger. Michigan, of course, being a player-led team, dominates. Then Harbaugh comes back and the team continues to roll. And then about halfway through the season, news comes out that a guy named Connor Stallion was reportedly stealing signs. That could be a whole separate video in itself. But the important thing to know is, without due process, the Big Ten commissioner, at the pressure of every other coach in the conference, decides to suspend Jim Harbaugh for the last three games of the regular season. For those of you keeping score, that's six regular season games. So of course this really fires up the team, and for the third year in a row, despite being underdogs again, Michigan pulls off the win against Ohio State without a head coach. Now I'm obviously not a Buckeye, but I would imagine that during the offseason, there was a lot of soul searching. Now Ohio State is not used to losing to Michigan, let alone three times in a row. So 2024 Ohio State basically did what 2023 Michigan did.
a lot of the seniors came back. They threw $20 million into the roster and really upgraded their players. And even on the coaching staff, they brought in Chip Kelly, who willingly left his position at UCLA to come be an offensive coordinator at Ohio State. And as we've established, Michigan is not doing so good in the 2024 season. So all the cards were stacked against us. Hell, Vegas said that we were 20 plus point underdogs. But even with all these metrics in favor of the Buckeyes, there was one huge advantage that everybody was overlooking. And that, of course, was the mental edge Michigan had on Ohio State. In the weeks leading up to it, everybody was talking smack about Michigan. Nobody was giving us a chance. At the end of the day though, games are not played on the message boards. The game is played on the field. So we finally get to November 30th, 2024. Michigan versus Ohio State in Columbus, Ohio. And early on in the game, you can tell that the Buckeyes weren't quite there mentally. Will Howard was not effective at all. And despite the passing struggles, Ohio State still opts to abandon the run game. So Michigan was winning in the trenches. This offensive line is of course not as talented as the one from last year, but throughout the season they've come a long way and they've gotten a lot better. And they did enough for Cleo Mullins to pull off some pretty big runs. That being said though, our quarterback did not have a good day. I will admit that Davis Warren did enough to keep us in the game, but I mean, come on, those three picks were inexcusable. But at the same time though, Howard also got two picks of his own. First one came from Amir Hall, which almost resulted in a pick six. And of course, the second one came from Makari Page. Why am I talking about these interceptions? Well, we gave Ohio State every opportunity to win the game. And of course, we gotta talk about Ohio State's kicking game. Their special teams must be having some serious PTSD. Back in 2022, if their kicker had made that field goal, they would have beaten Georgia and most likely have beat TCU to win the national championship. But instead, they lose by one point. And just like in that game, Ohio State's kicker chokes yet again in the most important game of the season. So you combine all those factors and it was a perfect storm waiting to happen. I think if Michigan was down by 14 or more points in the first quarter, it could have been a really short day for the Buckeyes. But instead, Michigan hung around and went into halftime tied at 10-10. Defense did enough to suffocate the Buckeyes in the second half. And even though Warren was throwing pick after pick after pick, the team did enough to win at the end. Now as for the scuffle there at the end, I always thought Gus Johnson was a pretty likable guy, but I don't know if I agree with this comment about the fight that happened. Khalil Mullen said it perfectly. People gotta, they gotta learn how to lose, man. You can't, you can't be fighting and stuff. We have four quarters to do all that fighting. And now people wanna talk and fight. That's wrong. Texas planted their flag at Michigan Stadium after their big win. And later in the season, Oregon did the exact same thing. Neither instance resulted in a fight. Ohio State could have taken the loss gracefully, but instead, decided to pick a fight like they always do. There were reports of players and staff members being spit on by fans. There were team members that got pepper sprayed. That was a fight that did not need to happen, but unfortunately it did. But outside of the post-game scuffle, this was a game for the ages. As an Illinois and Michigan alum, I've seen it on both ends of the spectrum. A lot of programs don't have an arch rival in the way that Michigan and Ohio State and teams like Auburn and Alabama do. It's a very special form of hatred. It goes on 365 days a year. And in one day of every year, the two teams get to meet and lay it all out in the field. I'm proud to be a Wolverine, and I love our passionate rivalries, especially the one against the Ohio State Buckeyes. So with a 7-5 and five record, Michigan will be going to a bowl game. Like I told my buddy during the game though, it doesn't matter if we lose that bowl game by 100 points because this game, the game, meant that much more to us. But that'll do it for this episode, guys. Consider supporting our channel by running the triple option, subscribing, liking, and commenting on today's video. We'll see you in the next video. But until then, hail to the victors. Go Blue.